Welcome to my sewing room. Oh, we have such an exciting show for you today. Exciting and, I might add, easy. The title of the show today is Puffing. All different types of puffing we're going to learn how to do today. This first lovely uh, collar I have here for a lady or for a, for a girl has the curved puffing in the candle flame pattern with a little bit of beautiful silk ribbon embroidery right in the middle of the candle flame. The next collar once again has curved puffing. Again, sort of in a candle flame pattern. This time in the middle there is a really pretty uh, motif embroidered from Switzerland. Ecru and white, as you probably know by now, are two of my favorite combinations. This little dress has absolutely beautiful, let me pull the collar back here so you can see, has really gorgeous curved puffing on the front with more lace shaping that comes down the front. And then I'll hold this out so you can see more curved puffing, oh, about an inch wide. Tiny little curved puffing, and it's very easy to make. And it comes on down the skirt where you can see curved puffing in what I'll just call an oval shape. Puffing doesn't have to be curved actually, puffing can also be straight. Here is a lovely bodice of a precious little heirloom party dress with the, cur with the straight puffing with lace and entredeau. And since this is such a sweet little dress, I think I'd like for you to come on down and see the fancy band. This is very easy beginning French sewing with the straight lace insertions and the entredeau and the, and the little ruffle. This is quite an easy dress to make. The lovely ladies blouse with the candle flame puffing on the collar, absolutely exquisite, and a little Swiss motif right in the middle. Let me turn around so you can see the back of this blouse. Isn't that a pretty blouse? And curved puffing is very easy to make. And I'm going to go over to the technique board right now and show you how. Puffing is very easy to make. Puffing begins with a strip of fabric. It can be as wide or as narrow as you want your puffing to be. This, I use a gathering foot to make puffing, so this particular strip shows that the gathering foot has been run down one side, and then I will run it down the other side, and look here, after, after the gathering foot has been run down both sides, this piece of fabric begins, my, looks like my puffing is just now beginning. This is another really pretty piece of puffing with the gathering foot rows on both sides. The first technique for treating the edge of the puffing, after all we do have to get rid of those uh, uh, unfinished seam edges, is to put entredeau on both sides. Entredeau goes on and then stitch in the ditch and then when you trim it, all of that's trimmed away and then zigzag. After the entredeau is attached and pressed back, do you see how pretty it is, the entredeau finished puffing edge? The next technique is to take a piece of lace insertion, bring it over, put the edge, the heading of the lace right on that gathering line. Now if you'll travel up here with me, this particular piece shows the zigzag. The zigzag went right along the line, the heading of the lace, and then after zigzagging it down, once again I will come in and trim away the raw edges underneath, and that's all finished. This once again shows that you can come in here and straight stitch if you would like to, and straight stitch or zigzag, all you do is come in and then trim away. Curved puffing is quite easy to do also. In this circular or oval shape, I have my puffing strip and I'm simply coming in on the board. You know, we use the board for a lot of different things. I simply come in and pin my pins like this. And then it's kind of puffy in here. It looks a little like we've got a problem there. Well, guess what you do to make it lay down? You simply take your hand and smush it down like this, and then it's ready to lay down. Over here shows the curved puffing with the laces all around it. Stick the pins in the outside, pull a string, make them lay down. And then this is the final piece of curved puffing after it has been zigzagged. Now let's go to a home decorating project for some more puffing. This is a beautiful pillow. 
Actually, the fabric is a damask fabric, as you can see. It has the wonderful curved puffing, which comes around and goes all the way around with a little bit of lace insertion on each side. And the pillow has a blue lining, which makes it especially pretty. You might be able to use some of your old damask napkins. Maybe if you have a few that don't match anymore in, in your drawer, you might be able to make some of these beautiful pillows using some of those napkins. Now, how do we make that beautiful curve puffing? Here is the here are the lines. First of all, you dot it off. Can you see how I've taken my pencil and I've dotted off the design? Next comes the puffing, and I'll show you how to make the puffing in just a minute. Next comes the puffing. I simply follow the puffing right along the line, as you can see I've done here. Pin it down. Now, let's, let's practice a little bit on how you put the lace around. You see, I have put the lace heading on the puffing machine line. Now I'm going to continue right around just like I'm curving any lace. I have my lace shaping board underneath here. I'm sticking the pins into the board. I put the pins on the outside. And looky there, I've absolutely got to do something. That didn't lay down very well yet, did it? Some of you have seen the formal show and know that there are magic little gathering threads inside the heading of the French and the English laces. Now look here, I've pulled one of those heading threads. Now you just watch. This is magic, I think. Look at there. See, that lace just lay down as pretty as can be. And now then, let's go on to the next step. The next step is to take the, remove the pins from the board, pin the whole thing flat. I've got the insertion on both sides. I pinned it flat, and then all I do is go to the sewing machine and zig zag it down. Very, very easy. Here is my finished version. I've zigzagged and zigzagged and zigzagged. And then I'm getting ready to finish the pillow. You see, all I do then is put the pillow back to the pillow front and this lace is simply butted up. Do you see that? Just simply butted up to the edge and zigzag to the edge of that pillow. Now, if that isn't easy to do, all right. Now, I promised you I was going to show you how easy it is to do puffing, and here we go. This is a little puffing strip. This one's about two and a half inches wide. It really doesn't matter how wide it is. It matters how wide you want your puffing to be. Now, there's one little trick to puffing I'd like to share with you. First of all, don't run your puffing foot, or well, excuse me, I call a puffing foot a puffing foot. It really is a gathering foot. But when you love heirloom sewing the way I do, it all of a sudden becomes a puffing foot. I move over a little bit of a seam allowance. I do not run the puffing foot. Now let's just get a real close up here and let you see what I'm talking about. All right, when I put the puffing foot down, I leave about a half an inch seam allowance. You see there's about a half an inch between the edge of the gathering foot and, and the fabric. And I'm going to run it along the line of the sewing machine. Now, when I start my puffing, I will be absolutely sure that I have the threads behind me. I will leave the fabric over there and I do not ever begin on the very edge of anything for any kind of sewing. I move in just a little bit. This is so fun and so easy to do. Are you ready? All I'm doing, I have my gathering foot. I'm, I'm gathering my puffing. And here we go, just right down the edge. Remember, I'm leaving a little seam allowance there, and it's just gathering as pretty as can be. And it will curve a little bit. That's what it's supposed to do. But then when I run the puffing down the other side, that curve will just straighten out. And you talk about making puffing easy. Oh, my goodness. Using this gathering foot just means you can make puffing in no time flat. And that's the way I like to do all sewing. All right, now then, let me stop just a minute here and I will turn around just to give you an illustration. Of course, I'm, nor, I'm not going to turn around right in the middle when I'm doing my puffing, but what you do, you run one side of the puffing, and then, of course, you will simply start on the other side, and there we go, and then you'll go down the other side. Okay, come on over to the boards. I have some really interesting things to show you. Um, this nightgown, I think, is a wonderful nightgown because it's very comfortable. This is our nightgown of the series, so today we've done the version of puffing on it. I have straight puffing on the top of the nightgown. Well, I think I'm going to pull a few strings off me here. Of course, as you, of course, I'm sure in your sewing room you never get strings all over you, do you? All right, here we go. Let's come on down and look at the curved puffing. What a pretty little ornament to, to put on the front. Well, it really is an ornament. It's an ornamental treatment, isn't it, to go on the front of the nightgown. This is a wonderful, comfortable, and very easy-to-make nightgown. 
The first thing I did was to make the little over piece. There's a little over panel on this nightgown. The first thing I did was to put the strip of straight puffing here and then put lace on the top, lace on the bottom, and entredeau. And that finishes my little over panel on this gown. Next step is to make the skirt. Do you remember I showed you just a minute ago on the pillow that you do your curve puffing and then I will come around with my lace just like we did just a minute ago, putting my lace insertion, sticking the pins right into a lace shaping board, that's easy to do, bringing my lace insertion all the way around, sticking the pins into the board and then I will pull a string and gather this to make it lay flat and then after getting all of the lace shaped on, including coming into a curve around here, I will go to the sewing machine and zigzag and zigzag and zigzag all of this down. And then I want you to notice that I have trimmed away the fabric. Here, I'll turn it up for you and let you see. See, I have trimmed away the fabric from behind the lace. So that lace will be peekaboo. All you do is go back in there and trim and then you have a beautiful, front to that really comfortable and beautiful nightgown. Next, my little doll would like to share with you how we've put puffing on her very fancy dress. My beautiful little blue-eyed blonde doll has the most beautiful puffing dress to show you today. Here is her little dress all done with puffing on the neckline, on the sleeves, and on the skirt. Look how pretty the puffing is right here on the bodice. By the way, this is a little heirloom party dress, a little high yoke dress for a doll. The puffing is on the bodice with entredeau and gathered lace edging. Let me turn this sleeve around. Isn't that a wonderful sleeve? It has the same puffing and insertion treatment on the edge of the sleeve. Now then, at the bottom of the skirt, travel on down the skirt with me, you can see the straight puffing with insertion on either side and the sweetest little ruffle that you ever saw at the bottom with a little bit of lace edging on. Speaking of the bottom, let me just show you her little slip. She has, in this case, a little blue slip with edging. I've even made a couple more versions of the slips for her to wear under this dress. Here is a little peach slip, and if she put the peach slip on under the netting, she would almost look like she had on a fall dress. A little pink slip on underneath the netting dress, and she would be all ready for the Easter Bunny. Now, let's see how you're going to make those different items that go on this dress. First of all, on the bodice of this doll dress, I take a square of netting and trace off the bodice. Here's the neckline. And then I, wait, but after I trace it off, I go ahead and put on the puffing and the insertion. And then I go back in and retrace the neckline on top of the puffing and insertion. Cut it out, and there's my bodice. The puffing strip for the skirt begins with machine gathering on this side and on the other side. Then simply lay down the insertion and zigzag right on top of your machine gathering row. That's the fancy band top. Here is the ruffle that has been gathered once again with my gathering foot. And then I will simply put this piece of insertion down on the gathering line and zigzag it and voila, my dress is all made. A very easy dress. Just remember how easy puffing is to make especially if you use a gathering foot on the sewing machine. Now, do you have to have a gathering foot to make puffing? Absolutely not. You can run two rows of, of gathering threads and pull it up and treat it just like you would regular gathering. Next, I have a beautiful silk ribbon stitch for you, the Cabbage Rose. Today I am so pleased to have as my guest Kathy Brower. Kathy is senior editor of So Beautiful Magazine and does she have something exciting for you. Welcome to the show Kathy. Thank you Martha, it's great to be here again. Um, today I'm going to show you something really pretty. I've ta taught you how to do the hand wrapped roses and now I'm going to show you how to extend that a little further and make a beautiful puffy cabbage rose. And today the project I have is actually a ring bearer pillow that uh, Martha's going to be teaching you on another show, but I wanted to teach you how to do these roses so that when she gets to that you'll know exactly what to do. Um, here are the giant cabbage roses. Now these are made out of 
double face satin ribbon, but I'm going to show you how to do it out of silk ribbon. And it takes a little while, so I'm going to get straight to it. Right here I have a finished rose. Uh, I've done my hand wrapped cabbage rose, and then on the back I've made four loops. Then you turn it over and you have to stitch the little loops, the ends of the loops together. And as you see here, there's some loose stitching in the back. I'm going to show you how to do that. I've already wrapped my hand wrapped rose, and there's instructions how to do that in uh, our program guide. But once you've done this and you've wrapped it a couple of times, oh, I'd say about five or six times, it looks like this on the bottom. I've already taken some tack stitches here. I'm going to take this ribbon and wrap it. Now this is the kind of the confusing part because you want to wrap this in such a way that the point is pointing up instead of the point being on the bottom. So we're going to wrap it kind of like a Christmas bow with the point pointing upward. And I'm going to pin these as I go, but what you'll want to do is stitch them as you go. Let me see if I can wrap a couple more here without confusing myself. All right, there's another one, and I'm going to pin that one. Now you can pin these as you go if you want to and then stitch them later. Then I'm going to change directions and do two more. Let me see if I can get this right. You'll constantly have to play with your ribbon so that you've got your loops right. I'm going to take this pin out and pin this again. You kind of get the concept here. So I've got my four loops, and this is what it looks like now. It's kind of like a rose with the loops, a star in the middle. I'm going to pin this last one right here. Now you can go ahead and cut this off you want. Get that out of the way. Now what you want to do is take a needle and thread and already have it knotted just for convenience. And I'm going to take, I'm going to slip my, my needle through the very edge of the top of that ribbon. And I'll probably take a little loop stitch just to secure it. Now what I want to do is go underneath through the loop and catch the, underside, the other side of the ribbon like that. And what that will do is it will pull that ribbon in and connect the two of those. You see what I've done? It's kind of hard to tell. Once, once you get it done, it all comes together. So I've connected the, the two of these together and I'm going to take one little loop stitch to secure that and then I'm going to pull it in slightly. This ribbon bounces around so I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to tack it in the middle. And you don't want to tack it, you don't want to pull it all the way. You want to just pull it about three quarters of an inch. And it'll be very loose, but once you tack it to your project, it will be secure. And then I'll move on to the next, next one. Let me turn this over to show you. See how that squish, squinches that in and makes that kind of puffy? And this is what, what it will look like when you're finished. You'll have all of these little loose threads in here, and you'll have a puffy little cabbage rose. And it's as easy as that. And then when you're ready, you can either glue it to your project or tack it with thread. Oh, and Kathy, that is really beautiful. It's Thank an elegant you. rose. It really is an elegant and looks reasonably easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Kathy. Next, we have a beautiful quilt square for you. It has lace and puffing loops. Puffing is beautiful when used not only with the traditional heirloom fabrics, but also with traditional quilting fabrics. This particular quilt square has the curved puffing with the lace around it, and as you can very clearly see, these are the traditional quilting fabrics. All right, here I have curved my puffing, and I have gotten my uh, lace all pinned down on one side. I'm going to take the magic string. Here's my little loop. I'll slip my pin in there. Remember, I've got to, I'll have to pull it to make that lace completely lay down flat. Do you see what I did? I used the gathering thread in the string and made it lay flat. And guess how you attach this puffing? Well, it certainly is not complicated to do. This is simply a zigzag all the way around. I think I have my length. Well, I don't think. I know I have my length on one and my width on two. 
and I'm going to come right down here and I'm just going to zigzag and zigzag and zigzag to attach the lace. Now when I come into this corner, as you can see, now remember I have my needle in needle down position, I'm going to turn, I'm not going to sew over the lace insertion, I'm going to turn and veer down this direction, let me slip this pin out right here, I'm going to come down this direction, zigzagging the lace down to the base fabric, all the way down, and then I will go back and do each piece uh, individually. Next, we have a beautiful craft for you. Just to show you that puffing is beautiful on nearly everything you might like to sew or make. How would you like a puffing mirror for the vanity in your bedroom that's very easy to make? Well, here we go. This lovely mirror has puffing all around the edge, a little center piece with a Swiss uh, hand loom there, I mean, excuse me, a Swiss motif there, and then it is a mirror on the back with all the pretty braid. This is very easy to make. Starting out with a wooden frame that looks a little bit like a, a ping pong paddle, both sides will be padded and glued with batting. Next comes a piece to cover the end. Just glue it down because as every piece is glued, a little bit later on, the whole thing will be covered with braid. So don't worry about raw glue edges showing, it's okay. Next comes a piece, a round piece to cover the circular part. Next comes the puffing that I've already completed. And then for the little piece in the center, a piece of cardboard a piece of batting, a piece of fabric all glued around, and then this pretty little Swiss motif on the top, and then there will be a little bit more of the lace glued around, and then on the bottom you will do the same thing, then you will put the little mirror, this is a little purchase mirror, purchase at one of the craft stores, glue it down, and then you will have finished this lovely mirror for your dressing table or lovely for a gift. Won't you come along with me to my attic? I have a really beautiful antique garment to share with you. For several centuries now, mothers and grandmothers and aunts and godmothers have loved making a beautiful christening dress for that precious new baby that is expected or has been born. Since puffing is the subject of our show today, you see puffing has been beloved for many generations also. This beautiful dress, which I estimate to be around 1900, has the most beautiful tiny little strips. Do you see that tiny little puffing? It is no wider than about an inch. It's put right in between the lovely Swiss, uh, hand, Swiss insertion strips. Now then, this mother or grandmother was so creative. Let me turn it right side out here. She even put puffing and tucks on the sash that ties the baby's dress in the back. The puffing did not stop there. This is a very long and very beautiful christening dress. The puffing is also on the skirt of the christening dress. Let's see how many tucks. One, two, three, four, five tucks. Swiss insertion. Beautiful strip of puffing, this time, oh, it's about two and a half or three inches wide. Some more Swiss insertion. One, two, three, four, five more tucks. And then just a strip of plain fabric. And then a lovely piece of Swiss edging on the bottom. Let me turn this around just half a second so you can see how pretty it is in the back, too, with the little sash hanging down. And the puffing is exactly on the top of the back, just like it is on the front. It has certainly been my pleasure today to have you join me in my sewing room. I really would love it if you would come back next time. <music>